All right, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Here we're going to discuss uh, the derivative of power function. Look at part one of that series. Well, f of x uh, is basically power function equals x to the power of n. In this case, it's n is a positive integer. Um, and I'll show you that what what I derive here is actually applicable to all values of n. But we'll prove that in um, later videos. So basically, let's start with the easiest um, power function. So f of x equals x to the power of 1, so where n is 1. And if we look at the, the curve of this, it's just this is just a, a straight line. Yeah, this is just a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's going to be a straight line, and then the, the, the slope here is just 1. Because that's basically what it is. This is y equals x. Rise over run. It rises and runs at the, at the same amount. So x is... So, once it, so we know that the slope is 1. So f of x equals 1. We can even prove this through definition derivative, which will go... We can go definition derivative equals, yeah, so you write it down basically limit h approach to 0 of fx plus h minus fx divided by h, that's definition derivative. Uh, so limit, so if we input this values is the function is x, so we'll just have x plus h minus x, which is fx over h. These cancel and then this is h over h, we're just left with 1. Okay, so now let's look at uh, where n is equal to 2. So basically, f of x equals to x squared. So now this one, if we look at the definition uh, derivative again, we'll go basically, so it equals limit as h approaches 0 of, well basically f of x plus h, so in this case we'll have x plus h squared minus x squared over h. So now if, if we expand the x plus h, we'll actually get x, x squared, squared, if we expand this, this equals to, well, this is just basic polynomial expansion. So then this one's going to be, this is times, times this and times this, so this is going to be x squared uh, plus, then this adds up, this will be 2xh plus h squared. I'll show another video on how to do this quickly. So basically this is what we get. And then if we put this inside there, so we'll get fx equals limit h to approach 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared, that's f, f of x all over h. So then this and this cancel. And then th if we divide this out by h, we'll get equals limit h approaches 0. Of here, this would be, and this would just be 2x. This, this h cancels, and then 2x plus h. So there's the limit of this. And then the limit as this goes to 0, this just equals to 2, 2x. So there's a derivative of it. So it's 2x here. If we look at x or so if we look at n equals 3 it's going to be we're going to do this something similar to there so we'll have f of x the derivative is going to be equal to it's basically limit h approaches 0 of x plus h to 3 minus x to 3 over h so now you could uh, expand this one out um, I'll show you a just quick one with we'll throw out the calculator here. Here's um, this website mathportal.org. It has a pretty sweet calculator here. So we'll go x. It, it, it's a polynomial expansion calculator. So we'll go to the power of 3, compute. So we get this value here. So I'll, I'll just, so you, we get x, x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3h squared times x plus 3. So we'll just uh, write this back down in here. So we'll go equals to limit h approaches 0 of x3 plus 3hx squared plus 3h squared plus, what is the next? Plus h cubed, then we get minus x cubed. This equals, this all divided by h. So again, this cancels. And then, we're, then we divide the h's out everywhere. So again, uh, we see that this is the only one that is h to the let's say, power of 1. This is power of 2, power of 3. So we're left with h here. 
So if we d if we simplify it, it just becomes limit. And this is 3x squared, and this is going to be 3hx plus h squared. And then as they go to 0, these just all cancel. We're just left with 3x squared. So that's, that's our derivative. And now, now if we look at uh, the pattern here, what we actually get is, so we got, let's say, let's say f of x. We'll just make a table here, f of x. If we go x to the 1, we'll call this f prime of x. This is the derivative here is, is just 1. It's, it's 1, and if we have x squared, this is going to be 2x. And if we had x cubed, this is equal to 3x squared. And, and what this actually uh, happens is if we have this arbitrary n, so n is just a positive integer, we'll get, so if you see the pattern here, this one, or this 1 is just equal to basically x0 times x0, this is just n, x, n minus 1. So basically, yeah, so if this was, if this was 1, uh, put the 1 here, minus 1, 0. So that this is basically it. This is the pattern here. This is actually true for all values. True for all values of n. Even if it's negative or whatnot, I'll prove that later. But uh, to get the general proof of here for positive uh, integers, we'll just go proof. This is just pattern if you were to go with anyone, uh, if, you, if you expand it out any, any of the x, x to the 4, x to the 15, and whatever, it will always be the same. So a proof here, so we'll just go, this one will uh, we'll use a binomial theorem, actually. So we'll go f of x, this one's equal to basically x plus h to the power of n minus x to the n. Oh, this is the limit again. Limit of approaches zero of this. So now expanding, if we expand x plus h to the power of n, uh, this is we'll use binomial theorem. I'll prove this later. Theorem. So yeah, so is um, binomial theorem? We'll go x plus h to the n. Is then this one's going to be equal to x n plus n x n minus one h plus n n minus one over two times x n minus two h two plus etc. There's some other weird stuff in here, but then then you get it ends off like this. This is n minus one plus h n. So uh, I'll prove this one later, but just so you should get something like this. Then if you plug this one inside, so yes, yeah, so if you plug this inside, what you get is basically, again, you'll, you'll subtract this x n here. So if you see all of these ones, they all have h higher power than except the first term. And we saw from all these that they just cancel. So that these ones all just cancel except the first term. The, so what we're left actually with is is this term right here. Well, you could even just put it in. I'll just put it in right here. Yes, yeah, so if we just input it here and then subtract this by x n all over h. So basically, again, this cancels, this cancels, and then if you divide h by everything out and then make it make h zero or go to zero this whole thing cancels, this h cancels, this, and, and now all we're left with is here. So we're left with equals n x to the n to the 1. So the, this is proof. I'll prove what this is later. So I'll, I'll prove this later. Or also prove later. Or it's just 1 0. But yeah, anyways, so so this, that's basically it. So if we want to do now, for let's say example, we'll go with let's say y equals. Uh, let's go, f yeah. Let's go y equals x to the six. The derivative is going to be y prime is just equal to six times x to the five. If y is equal to x to the thousand, then derivative is just equal to basically thousand 
times x to the 999. Nine, nine, nine. So that's all it is. Then if you have a number, let's say it equals 2 to x3 in front of it, this one will just go equals 3 times 2 x to the 2, and this is just equal to 6 x2. So yeah, this is pretty easy once you get the hang of using this power rule. It's pretty easy. Well, uh, hopefully you learned uh, about the derivative of power functions, and yeah, you should memorize this. It's pretty easy to memorize. It's a good pattern, and it's very useful in all of calculus and engineering and whatnot. Well, thanks for uh, watching, and uh, stay tuned for another Matt Easy Solution.